Welcome to ANN. This is Oliver W. Long's story, May 15, 1868. The impeachment trial of President Johnson is in progress, and we are pleased to have with us today two leading congressmen with solutions for reconstructing the political life in the southern states and the South as a whole. Welcome, Congressman Thaddeus Stevens of Pennsylvania and Senator Charles Sumner of Massachusetts. Gentlemen, let's get right down to the important issue, the final solution in the South. What's been going on in Congress lately? I'll answer that. I am leading a group of congressmen who are working to impeach President Johnson for trying to fire Secretary of War Stanton. The Joint Committee of 15 Republicans has declared that the former Confederate states should not be entitled to representation in Congress. President Johnson's claim that the South is peaceful and ready to accept the outcome of the war has been discredited. Congress is going to determine the Reformation policy, not the president. We've practically taken that out of his hands. Um, I want to add something to that. My plan would exclude from both voting and holding office not just the generals and politicians of the Confederacy, but authors, editors, publishers, contributors, speakers, and preachers, anyone who encouraged the secession of any state or the waging of war against the United States. That sounds a bit harsh. Would you care to elaborate? Yes, I will. On December 14, 1865, when the 39th Congress first met, we refuse to seat any of those Confederates. I'll say now what I said then, that the suspension of the vote for these men until, say, 1870 is the mildest of all punishments ever inflicted on traitors. I pray not to admit those who have slaughtered one half million of our countrymen until their clothes are dried. I'm not going to sit side by side with men who smell of the blood of my kinsmen. The southern states have left the Union, so the South has to be remade. Thaddeus, I want to explain that. To put it another way, I'd call it state suicide. The southern states, while not legally seceding, have essentially become under the condition of territories and are now subject to congressional authority. They need to write new constitutions with the Republican form of government as stated in the Constitution. Oh, no. Don't get started on that again. You already gave that speech, and it was two hours long, you windbag. No, now Senator Sumner has a point. There has to be a minimum requirement for readmission into the Union as a state. I had the answer to that. I introduced a bill that would require southern governments to form constitutional conventions, take loyalty oaths, and ratify the 14th Amendment giving Negroes the rights to citizenship. And the citizenship of the former Confederates would be denied for a period of five years. My critics called that treating white southerners as enemy aliens, but that's really what they are. Okay, Mr. Stevens, you've made your point. Now, Senator Sumner, what is your main political philosophy? I like to call myself the voice of New England. And uh, my main forte, or our main point, is equality before the law for all citizens. I gave this as a speech on February 5th, 1866. It was 67 pages. I consider myself the politician of abolitionists. I proposed a civil rights bill which, when enacted, will guarantee equal access for all citizens in public accommodations, schools, churches, cemeteries, and jury duty. Equality also outlaws separate black and white passenger cars and trains. Congress can work out the details which don't concern me. Wow, that's a lot to swallow. So how do you two get along with President Johnson? I understand that the president wants to pardon the Confederates and get on with the business of government, which was what President Lincoln wanted. We, we don't. don't. Johnson equated both of us and our comrade Wendell Phillips with Confederate leaders, 
since we're both fundamentally opposed to the principles of his government. He has stated many times, this is a government for the white man. He's clearly out of touch with political reality and is looking to get impeached. I see. Well, is there anything that you do agree on with the president? Yes. In the beginning, he was opposed to rule by wealthy southern planters and agreed with us that confiscation was the way to break their traditional ruling class power. In September 1865, I called for the confiscation of 400 million acres from the wealthiest of southerners and the granting of 40 acres to each freed man. Now he's backed off on that under some kind of pressure. Well, Mr. Stevens, do you care at all about who is on your side? No, Mr. Longstory. I would like to be known as the master of congressional committees, machinery, infighting, and parliamentary tactics. I am indifferent to both praise and criticism. Okay. Well, Senator Sumner, do you have any final constructive recommendations? That the Freedmen's Bureau be made into a permanent agency with cabinet rank. And I'd like to see the southern states divided into five military districts governed by a military governor. This is the beginning of true reconstruction and true protection. Okay. Well, I guess that's it. Oh, uh, one more thing. I'd like everyone here to read the speech I gave in Congress in 1860, uh. The Barbarism of Slavery. This will make everyone aware of why the South has to be punished. Wow. Well, haven't we had enough punishment for the South already? I have another suggestion for Reconstruction. This is a statue by John Rogers in 1865. It's called Taking the Oath and Drawing the Rations. And it depicts a Union captain soldier and a Southern woman taking the Oath of Allegiance as her frightened little boy looks on and the little black boy looking on guarding the rations. So then what is your suggestion? I think that every Southern official and planter who wants their land back should kiss the foot of this statue. It would make them repent. I like that. I wish I had thought of it. I'd like to be here when you make them do that. Miss Flum, that's mean. You must really want them to suffer. Yes, I do. Let's grind it in that they lost the war and will never rise again. I don't know what to say. Maybe mercy is finally needed here. The people of the South are Americans after all, just as we are. And we're all one country again. Let's ask the viewers if the South needs more punishment from Congress. This is Oliver W. Long's story with the Abolition News Network saying good afternoon.